Well, hello everybody. Here we are for our uh, July 31st. It's July 31st, 2018, Jamie. Where's the year gone? Right. And uh, today is our Foster Web Marketing webinar, our monthly webinar. And this is pretty cool. I feel like we got uh, we got an opportunity to do something, Jamie. We haven't done this in a while. I know. We have all kinds of people running around here setting us up technically. And because, uh, you know, Zach is gone. He's off in the woods somewhere, like <laughs> camping. Who knows what he's doing? But we have uh, taken over the building. And um, excited to be. Thank you for letting me participate, by the way. Of course, as always. <laughs> and so this is good stuff because um, this is foundational uh, in terms of marketing. And um, Jamie's done a great job of preparing this presentation for everybody. And um, of course, we welcome all your questions. And if you could just put them in the question box, then then Connie, who's who's uh, 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 mediate. What is the word for that? Yeah, mediate. Yeah, okay, she's like in there, so she'll pop them up there. And if we get a chance to answer them, we will. If not, we'll follow up afterwards with uh, answers to the questions. And of course. We're always available to answer anybody's questions. All you have to do is give us a call. And uh, if you want to talk to me, all you have to do is uh, shoot Connie a note, and we'll set up a time, and uh, we can do that. So we plan to have this to be about 45 minutes or so with uh, probably filling in with questions if we get any. Uh, so let's get going, Jamie. Let's talk about how to improve your SEO, or really just how to improve your overall digital marketing using using offline techniques that have been extremely successful for time immemorial and um, our own clients uh, have had tremendous success doing this so let's let's talk about that yeah and there's a couple interesting things to remember right off the bat you're right that a lot of these are just general best practices when it comes to your business both online and off uh, you know the Offline marketing channels have you know existed much longer than the digital side has, and a lot of the tactics have been hammered out more or less you know to perfection in terms of what works and what doesn't. Uh, where the two overlap, though, and where offline can inform online and vice versa, uh, you get into some really interesting situations where you find yourself with a, an opportunity to sort of directly affect your organic visibility, uh, utilizing some of these offline techniques in ways that may not occur to you or in ways that are subtle to a certain degree but can definitely have a noticeable effect on, on your business and its visibility online. And that's really the most important thing to remember right away is that there is a connection between your offline marketing and not just your online marketing, but I mean specifically and, and literally your organic rankings mm -hmm. and you can affect them by utilizing some of these offline techniques and methods that we're going to get into. Um, so right off the bat, there's sort of an overarching concept that you need to keep in mind uh, that, that sort of paints the context for all of this, and that it's your offline marketing is already a significant, if not one of the most significant factors uh, in terms of driving search traffic to you, to your website, to your practice uh, in, in whatever capacity. Um, E-Consultancy did a study recently, a couple years ago, uh, the gist of which you know, was boiled down to one question, what prompted you to search for an online brand? Um, and overwhelmingly, the results that they found were that they're overwhelmingly offline sources. Uh, you can see here, perhaps to no surprise, TV advertising, the number one uh, driver of search traffic for a brand. Uh, you're sitting there on your couch with your phone, you see a commercial, or it reminds you of that thing you were supposed to do last week or whatever, you pull your phone out and you get to work. Word of mouth, something that's important to every business owner. Uh, how many people we talk to when we ask them what their biggest driver of, of new businesses is referrals. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. I mean, and just to kind of this whole thing, no matter what, when we were just talking about this and we talk about this all the time and this this comes up is that no matter what, when someone mentions to you a brand or you're like, you know, I need a doctor for whatever or I'm looking for a house painter and somebody says, oh, use, you know, a a one house painting, you're not going to you don't say, well, what's the phone number? Sometimes maybe, but then you're still going to go and search for them online and see what other people say about them. That's what we do. Um, 
so yeah, you're right. I mean, like, it's not that these advertising mediums are not good to do anymore. Like, uh, we're not saying don't do TV advertising or don't do these things, but know and utilize them that they are ultimately these people are going to go to your website, are going to look at your digital footprint to see if you are actually who you say you are or what somebody else said you are. That's right. The humans do that. Your potential new business is doing that. But in a way, and we'll get into this, Google is doing that too. That's We're going to be good, yeah. getting into the concept of, of social proof and that sort of verification that you are who you say you are and doing what you say you're doing is an important factor in how Google decides to display you or not. So, you know, this may be sort of self-evident here, but, you know, offline sources are major significant drivers of online traffic. And that's relevant for a couple very important reasons that we want to go into now. And I sort of led with this already, but your traffic that you are able to generate from offline sources can absolutely have an effect on your organic search rankings. It seems a little counterintuitive and it's not necessarily a directly correlated one-to-one -one relationship, but it is one of the many factors that can go into having a positive or negative effect on your overall uh, organic visibility from time to time. Now, there's a couple key components of this whole puzzle that uh, we want to get into uh, that are going to sort of uh, bounce off of each other and overlap with each other in, in some important ways. And the first concept that we need to keep in mind when exploring how offline can improve offline marketing can improve your organic SEO is the concept of branded search. Now, this is somebody they pull up their browser, they go to Google, and they type in foster web marketing because Ben Glass told them that they need to go check you out. Uh, you know, they, that's, this is different, it's important to clarify, different from a direct website visit. They're not going to fosterwebmarketing.com. They're doing a search for right. Foster Web Marketing or insert your own business's name here. Or Foster Web Marketing Reviews or, you know, like if exactly if somebody's saying, hey, you should uh, use Ben Glass, they're going to go say, hey, uh, let me check out Ben Glass and see what other people are saying about them. Ultimately, they will get to that to their to their branded website, but they're looking at what other people are saying about them. And you know, this is sort of old and also new again. Uh, this has for a long time been an important part of Google's core ranking algorithm. It's not necessarily the number one primary factor, but the ability to drive branded traffic to your site is an indicator to Google that people are interested in you. They're looking for you. Google's in the business of serving their customers who are not us, they are the searchers. Google self-selects towards rewarding the searchers with information that they're going out and seeking on their own. If people are looking for you, that is an indication to Google that they should be serving you more often because there's a demand for it. And this all sort of uh, orbits around this concept that we mentioned a moment ago of social proof. Uh, in just sort of a nutshell, Google is looking uh, for you to demonstrate and prove via you know how you're able to exist within the search engine that you are you know at, at a very sort of basic level that you are a real business that you have a real location that people are actually utilizing you in the way that you're saying that you are and the more interaction and the better that interaction is generally the better uh, of a ranking signal that, that Google will receive on their end so can I ask a clarifying question of you Jamie mm -hmm. we're really just talking talking about organic yes. search yes we're not talking about pay-per-click or adwords and this that's a whole different ball of wax right yeah and you know so this is great stuff for the guys that are done spending pay-per-click or looking at other alternatives where they can do things without being subjected to uh, uh, the bidding war of pay-per-click correct <clears throat> yes absolutely okay. and as you know, it can get very expensive, and this is, uh, you know, if you're looking to maximize your potential in organic and squeeze every ounce of opportunity out of your organic rankings, uh, a lot of this is going this to be it. very this important to, yeah. to keep in mind. Um, you'll notice here that uh, I mentioned branded search on the slide is also the easiest factor to manipulate via offline efforts. This is sort of the most direct result of your offline marketing is typically going to result in some sort of branded search more often than not. Uh, some of these other concepts that we're getting into are, are sort of less direct in terms of effect when thinking of you know, the sort of results orientation of your 
Okay, and before you move on, also, too, even if someone does a vanity search, like, you know, personal injury attorney, Fairfax, Virginia, or whatever, and they get a whole bunch of results, Ben Glass, or, uh, you know, a whole page, and then they start looking around, then they will do more branded search as a result of that, right? Yes, it's a very common searcher behavior to start with a, you know, top level vanity keyword they don't know who they're looking for they know what they're looking for they're looking for yeah. an attorney like and if an i'm area. looking for a house painter and i'm like fairfax house painter i might start there and i might you know i usually just skip over the ads and i start looking and then i say well these guys are are pretty top shelf in terms of organic and maybe they've got an ad too so maybe they know what they're doing but then we usually go and, and see well what do other people say about them how's their work perform mm -hmm. and so I always love to tell this to uh, people that we talk to. Uh, the number one thing that a lawyer or, or a doctor or anybody can do, the best thing that they personally can do for marketing is just be really good at what they do. That's right? true. Like you can be the best uh, marketing restaurant out there, but if you just have bad burgers, you got bad burgers, and that's what people are going to say about you. It's a good way to get them there once, but right, right. not any more than that. So. Really, everybody, the number one marketing thing is just be good at your job. Be a great lawyer so people will talk about you. Yeah, the rest of this stuff is just sort of window dressings for that fact. If that fact <laughs> yeah. isn't true, it's going to be difficult right. to, to build success uh, no matter how much of this stuff uh, you've got going on correctly. So to expand on the social proof concept a little bit, you know, it's a pretty straightforward uh, concept to, to understand once you realize that this is one one of the many things that Google is looking for, you can begin using it uh, to your advantage. Uh, as we mentioned uh, a moment ago, you know the the very fact that people are searching for you uh, has baked into it a certain amount of trust and authority uh, in the eyes of Google, and they they perceive that positively when uh, deciding how and exactly where to to rank your site compared to anybody else's. Now, it's important to keep in mind, too, that branded search, in the same way that social proof is one aspect of a very large group of things that make up Google's core ranking algorithm, you know, branded search is also only one of the many facets to the social proof concept as well. That would warrant its own webinar, uh, and we'd be happy to, to expand on that at some point in the future if there's interest. Uh, but just know that you know, there's a lot more to all of this than uh, just what we're going to be able to cover in, in the short time that we we have today, uh, but in in a similar fashion to the idea of wanting to make sure that your online visibility is sort of well rounded and that you're approaching things from a sort of multifaceted point of view, you want to make sure that that's uh, also the case on your offline marketing as well. So, what is the what do these little represent? Is this like the smiley faces reviews or or people that are happy they're doing a good job and the, the re thumbs up or good reviews, making sure that. You're seen on mobile, which is a whole different search platform than what I assume down there is desktop and then local. Those are different places, right? Yeah, absolutely. And they all sort of work together to build this social proof concept that Google's looking for in the same way that they also uh, influence a multitude of other ranking factors. You know, they, this was the most complicated little web icon I could find, but well, this, that's what this I was web just could like, easily be much more complex than it is. Well, we've come a long way since the stick figure, so I'm just saying this is pretty good representative of like, and that's what, you know, a lot of people that are just really putting all their eggs in one basket for the pay-per-click game and spending all that money there, they're, they're not seeing this part of it, and this, this is, you know, buying your own home really this is the mortgage instead of renting space on pay-per-click where as soon as you stop doing that all that goes away all those efforts go away all that money goes away is that you should be and i'm not saying that you should not use pay-per-click because uh, pay-per-click has its place but not instead of all of these other things that you need to do fundamentally mm -hmm. and foundationally right jamie uh, these are the these are the moving parts that it would be to your benefit to, to hammer out early yeah. on and to, to stay on them. You can supplement in any number of ways going forward, but if there are issues with a lot of these fundamental aspects, it's going to create long-term problems if yeah. they're not resolved. So branded search was the first sort of major component of how offline marketing can influence and ultimately improve organic rankings. Uh, but the next concept is a little trickier, um, and it's 
brand authority. Now it's important to point out here a little caveat at the, the beginning here that this is not to be confused with Moz's domain authority metric or other, other online tools also use uh, similar domain authority metrics that are completely unrelated to this. Brand authority is a patented concept uh, of Google's that's been part of their Panda algorithm since 2013, 2014. Um, and at its simplest, it's a quotient. It's the ratio of links that you have to the amount of branded search traffic that you get. Pretty straightforward, right? Uh, they don't tell you what a goal ratio or quotient should be. They don't tell you, uh, you know, even a range that you should be striving for. Uh, but based on just other industry best practices and based on a few sort of reverse engineering techniques, you can get a pretty good idea for uh, what they are actually rewarding. Even if they're not telling us sort of what ratio should you be striving for, we can see the ratios that are performing better than than others. Uh, and you know, like many things when it comes to Google, uh, the the main principles here are going to be natural and and balanced uh, approach to, to this the same way uh, as you would anything else. Now let's take a look at just a couple uh, examples here to demonstrate what we're talking about in terms of brand authority quotient. But let's take you know one website who has 1300 backlinks pointing let to me, them. Let me just ask this question. Hit me. Because uh, <laughs> I, I bet you there's a lot of people that are that are curious about this too. When, I just want you to explain for the people, when you say domain, we're talking about dub, 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 here's the website URL.com. Yeah. That's what we mean by domain. Yes. And so that's what we're talking about with domain authority, with the links, with that domain from another website going to you. Mm -hmm. That's domain authority. Brand authority is the name of the firm or the name of the practice or your personal name or any variants of that. Yes. Which may or may not have a link associated to back to your website. Uh-huh. Yes. That's the, that's the tricky stuff. And we'll go into that yeah. uh, just here momentarily. Okay. Um, but, you know, as, as you mentioned, sort of the domain authority that you have is one component that sort of makes up this larger brand authority concept, uh, which is, Basically, simply, you know, at at its most, you know, distilled uh, definition, Google's simply trying to tack a number on to anybody's, you know, quote brand authority. They're trying to get a number that they can uh, plug into their algorithm. But so, first example, if you've got one website that has thirteen hundred backlinks pointing to it, and it generates twenty eight hundred branded searches uh, in a given time period, in that particular time period, its brand authority quotient would be, you know. 0.46, you just round that to 0.5. But if we take a slightly more lopsided example, let's say somebody has several years ago gone out and done a ton of high volume link building. Uh, you know, They were told that links were an important ranking factor and they went out and they bought as many of them as they could. They weren't particularly concerned about exactly where they were coming from. It was a, it was a volume grab. Um, so let's say they have 5,500 backlinks, but don't have that much name brand recognition and are only generating 1,300 branded searches um, over that same time period. Now, this brand authority quotient for this site is going to be significantly higher than the first example. You know, just you know, I made all of these numbers up just for demonstration purposes, but in this example, the quotient would be 4.2 and change. Now, we well, which one's better? Let me ask a dumb question. It's a great question. And, you know, Google doesn't necessarily tell you you should be striving for, you know, a 1.0 quotient or, or anything. They don't tell you anything beyond the fact that they look at this and it's, you know, comprised of these couple of metrics. Uh, but what we can see are the sites that actually perform well in rankings and sites that are closer uh, to a more balanced uh, approach between the number of links that they have and the number of brand searches and brand mentions that we'll get into next, uh, those are the sites that just categorically, objectively, are outperforming sites with a much more lopsided quotient in this particular example. So to a certain extent, yes, the days of high volume link building are over. Uh, as with, like I said, if almost every other aspect of your online and offline marketing uh, balance and you know a natural feel is what Google is looking for. They don't want you to be going out and acquiring links. They want those links to come into fruition because the content was so worthy 
in its own right of being uh, linked to. It's the same. It's it's <laughs> it's based on the the whole algorithm the way they did it in the first place. I mean, it's it's guys like us over the years that have caused this. Well, just them improving the search engine significantly over the years, um, it, where it was unfair, where people could just buy links and um, they could be higher than somebody just because they had a bigger bankroll and they were able to um, uh, buy more links. And that's just not authentic and that's not real. And so, you know, those of you that might be frustrated, and we all get frustrated with Google uh, because of the constant changes, but ultimately, as you said, Google works for the searcher. And so as a searcher, as somebody doing research or looking, we want to have an honest uh, honest relationship and, and know that we're getting exact. If this restaurant truly is giving me great hamburgers and I go there, I want a great hamburger. If I go there and it's not a good hamburger and it's just because the, that that company that did it, you know, fooled me, that's going to, that's not good. And then if Google's producing that, that's not good for Google. Absolutely right. And, you know, you mentioned the continual improvements that Google makes to its core ranking algorithms, to its sort of ancillary algorithms as well, are all working towards this larger goal of sort of democratizing digital visibility. Uh, they want democratizing. Look, Jamie's always got these big words. So they yeah, want Jack. their users, the searchers, to have a voice in how this information is displayed and presented in exactly the way, you know, if you if we want to continue using that restaurant metaphor, as a consumer, my vote should count. If I went to that restaurant because it was highly ranked and it was terrible, I feel like you, you should have the ability to let people know and have your voice counted in, in what is relevant and useful information for people online. So we've gotten sidetracked slightly, but the takeaway about brand authority is two things. First is do not worry about the actual number all that much. Strive for natural, balanced digital visibility. The second is that, and Google was uh, very low key about this, did not really make a big deal of it at the time uh, that it was announced when they patented the Panda algorithm. And it's something that often gets forgotten about a lot of times when it comes to organic ranking, but uh, links don't have to be links to be links. Uh, the That's huge. The concept of a link is very simple. It's, you know, it's a hyperlink. We've all seen them. We click on hundreds of them a day, but simply having your brand mentioned, even if it's not linked, Google's able to see that and track that and count that towards your overall brand authority metric. So if you were cited in a news article and you know were, you were quoted in a news article, um, but they don't they don't have a link to you, you still get a benefit from being in the news article, right? That's right. Your brand, your name. Now that's huge. It still may be worth reaching out to that person yes. and saying, "Hey, would you mind linking to my bio or to my homepage or whatever?" But even if that's not the case, even if they say no, or even if they say, "Yeah, sure, for eighty bucks or whatever." Uh, you know, the implied link, the brand dimension uh, is still going to count for something uh, and is still going to work toward positively affecting your online visibility, specifically within organic rankings. So what do we do with all of this information now? We know or have learned a couple things and that it's specifically as it applies to offline marketing, there's really three levers that we have to leverage online visibility and organic visibility. It's branded searches, brand mentions, which may be on search, may not be on search. This includes everything on social media. This includes, uh, you know, just getting mentioned in a news article or a blog, like you said. Uh, and then also good old fashioned link building. There's gonna be a lot of overlap between these three categories, but these are the, uh, these are the opportunities that you have to make positive movement from your offline advertising. So positive signals in these areas sent to Google through your offline marketing channels and other online channels too. I mean, I know we're talking offline today, but this, it doesn't apply only to offline marketing. You can easily apply all of these techniques to your online marketing as well. So what do we do with all this information? Where do we take it and apply it, Tom? Where would you start? Um, I would start by watching this webinar. <laughs> So, you know, just to recap, the overall goal is to increase your brand authority in general terms by increasing the number of people who are looking for you by name, 
uh, increasing the number of times that you're mentioned by name elsewhere online by other people. Now, Google's going to figure out very quickly if you just go out and buy 10 other websites that you manage and, and just mention yourself all the time. Uh, that is not the way to do that. They uh, explicitly mentioned that they factor in uh, to whatever degree that they're able, you know, the sort of ownership network of all of these different brand mentions. If you own several different sites yourself and are just constantly patting yourself on the back across these multiple channels, that might work short term. It might not even work short term, depending on how quick Google's able to notice it. Uh, but being, yeah, we're not advocates of doing that. The, all of the same general link building principles are going to apply to trying to increase brand mentions and branded search as well. So you've got here TV advertising. I mean, obviously we have to put that because that's the biggest splash, the biggest thing, cannonball that you can do. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know, most people are not going to be able to afford that. But if you're one that can, uh, then this is something that you want to look into. And obviously, working with a media buyer that um, uh, that knows the market and can help you. You target your perfect client as, as best as possible. That's a whole nother discussion point. But uh, yeah, I mean, if you, you're getting out there on TV knowing that people will go and do a brand search, that's one of the biggest things that you can do. Mm -hmm. And of course, this isn't the only reason you should consider TV advertising. You know, that it's, you know, all of the traditional reasons to consider TV advertising remain the same, but this is one potential avenue that you have to have an effect on your online visibility. Yeah, you can track the phone calls that came from your TV ads, but it's nice knowing that at the same time, you are also to a certain degree boosting your regular content optimization and other SEO techniques just by uh, increasing that total volume of branded search queries that you're able to bring in. And just to back up about the TV ads, there's lots of ways to do You can still make TV advertising and do terrible commercials. I mean, that's the other thing, too. If you're, if you're doing the old school commercials, they're not going to work as well mm -hmm. in today's world. So make sure that you're getting interesting and you're creative in your commercials. Uh, of course, I would always, I'm always about success stories and have your, your client speak for you. Uh, I believe that those are the most successful than you just getting up there and screaming loud like uh, Mike the Hammer or whatever that guy does. That's right. That now, works for him. But that's almost like the IHOP joke thing, right? Well, it's funny because to a certain degree, the logical extreme of all of these approaches uh, is, you know, the concept of going viral. Well, if, if brand mentions are so good, I go viral and I'm on every single person's Facebook feed across the nation. I've got 300 million people mentioning my name or my brand. Yeah, to a certain extent, that is that can be very helpful from an organic rankings perspective, just from a general brand awareness perspective as well. It, it touches multiple different sort of aspects of your online presence and your online visibility. Um, I was just reading uh, on a sort of unrelated note, uh, an interesting study about how going viral may not be as effective as you think it is or want it to be. Somebody did a very data-driven study of just how much new business was generated from you know hitting the jackpot and going viral on one of their posts. And it wasn't that much, but if you're looking not just from an ROI perspective, okay, well, I made this silly video that's making a lot of people laugh. It's getting my name into a lot of people's heads, but I'm not generating any new business from it. There are still these sort of mechanical advantages that you can leverage uh, with the improved uh, digital visibility that you're able to milk out of a situation. Like what's the like guy, that? what's the uh, law hawk? Or <laughs> Texas <laughs> law hawk. That's the, Here we are talking the about funniest, him. Funniest, best. Mm -hmm. best commercials I thought that was so very funny and creative I don't know if it got him the kind of clients he was looking for uh, but it was it got a lot of our attention and it's got us talk, talking about it yeah, now. there you go a couple Thanks. branded searches right. or brand mentions yeah. coming up so one important area that's easy to overlook in all of this uh, is probably you know the best weapon that you have in your arsenal here for driving uh, online success from any marketing channel really is your own office and your own staff. Uh, you know, if we go back to the study that we looked at at the beginning of this uh, conversation, we saw that word of mouth referrals are the second largest source of offline, uh, brand, you know, offline oriented branded searches. Um, and if that is the case, the easiest and most direct way to influence business coming in from referrals is by 
doing like what you said, being good at your job, being good at your job, and being liked by people. Right. Uh, your staff in your office are going to <laughs> exactly. Yeah, these are you know hidden, hidden weapons in your ability to uh, leave people with a positive impression. Uh, you know, even before you're getting into things like review generation, uh, but just having happy clients, patients, whatever the Did case you may change be. change that customer service is number one from what it was? Customer service is number one. That used to say, crush that custy serve serve. Uh, that is the sign that a buddy of mine who owns a business keeps up uh, behind the counter where his employees can see it and the uh, the shoppers cannot. But I encourage all of you to crush that custy serve serve because otherwise none of this is going to matter. Yeah, I mean, like just to just to beat on this, like I just constantly beat on this, and we're you know we're obviously web marketers, and um, we're about keywords and da 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 da. But everyone that I talk to forever. What is the best clients? What are the best cases? What are the best patients? How do they get to you? It is never because of my pay-per-click campaign. It is never because of, uh, of you know, uh, it, it because they found. Well, sometimes it's because they found some long tail search and went through whatever. But ultimately, hands down, it's about the brand. It's about the referral. It's like the best cases come from referrals. Friends work. Fr people work with people people they like friends refer people that they like people like to help each other out and like we we'll, like if Jamie I see you uh, if like what I just do the other day I just sent you a link to uh, Jensen the bike uh, that's right website cuz Jamie and I are both mountain bikers and I'm like hey I like this stuff I just cuz I know that you're into it I'm going to send that to you if if I see somebody that uh, has a trouble with their knee or something I'm like oh you should go talk to my guy you know, I'm constantly trying to push my chiropractor on people um, because I think he just does a great job. I wouldn't do that if I didn't feel he did a good job. I mean, it's almost like you want to help out your buddy. And that's what people will do. You notice that if you got a DUI I mean, or if you got, they're going to be like, hey, I got a great guy. You know, he helped out this and this and this and this. Um, anyway, but yes, doing a great job is the best marketing you can do so do not ignore that do not ignore that and start doing pay-per-click over that the other important factor to remember when considering how beneficial your own staff can be is sort of the data side of it uh, you have invaluable access to all of this data uh, or you you've got the opportunity to in terms of finding out just by talking with people, which of your other approaches are working? How are people actually finding you? Are they saying, oh, yeah, I saw your TV ad, you know, that led me to your website. I looked around, read some reviews, and ultimately, you know, decided to call you. Was it, oh, yeah, you know, the billboard, I've been driving by it every day for four years. You know, I finally needed somebody, and, and you know, your billboard was the first thing that came to mind. If you don't take the opportunities in these customer service interactions, especially early on, to learn which of these marketing channels is actually working effectively for you at the moment, uh, you know, you're missing a major opportunity because uh, if you do know what's working and not, not working, you can make a much better informed decision about how to market and, and where your marketing resources should be applied. So once we get out of your own office, there's a couple other uh, of these major sources of offline drivers of online traffic, and you know print publications remain a source worth considering. You know I mentioned magazines by name here, but this also includes Yellow Pages, any of the sort of traditional print advertising. Uh, you know I work with a handful of clients who who still swear up and down by the effectiveness of their their Yellow Page ads. It depends upon your location, you know. Your location, yeah. your your demographics, right. your your target audience. Right. But the important thing to remember here is they know because they ask. Right. And they hear, oh yeah, you know, I saw you in the yellow pages. I went to the yellow pages. For them, that's a smart and effective, you know, use of marketing budget. In other situations, uh, it can be a lot harder to justify an expense like that. Um, the benefit of print publications of almost any kind is the ability to sort of pick and choose where you're going to be seen. Do you want to be in field and stream, or do you want to be in, I don't know, good housekeeping, or I don't how many magazines are left, how many are there? Or, or other people newsletters, you know, like that's the other thing. I don't know if you get to that, but mm -hmm. just like, you know, uh, I know that we have a lot of clients, 
in, I don't know if he's still doing it. I don't even know if he's listening to my buddy Shane down there in Atlanta. He used to, used to be in chiropractor uh, newsletters and, and doing some cross promotion between the two of them. Uh, um, that's another way to do this. That's, that's very inexpensive where you can help each other out. Yeah. And th there's, there's sort of two things at play here. One, you need to know to the degree that you're able where yeah. you want to be, how much do you really know about your core clientele? Where are they and how can you insert yourself into that conversation in a meaningful way? And then the other thing here too that's important to remember, and this is going to be true or more true more often for uh, larger publications than it is. I love the idea of the sort of cross promotional newsletter thing, um, but you get sort of hidden bonus backlink opportunities a lot yeah. of times. A lot of these publications, if they're still in print, are absolutely online as well. Well, and if you're looking at an advertising package, uh, you know a lot of times there will be an option that includes actual, you know, tangible digital backlinks these days. And if it's not on there, don't be afraid to ask as well. If you're purchasing ad space, uh, you know, a link can can absolutely be folded into to a package like. That. And of course, you know, you know, Ben Ben Glass does this fantastically. Um, in in so many ways, he touches on all these areas, and you know, getting involved in great legal marketing if you're not already there. Uh, certainly reaching out and talking to Charlie about what they recommend. And Ben can just show you the stuff that's worked for him. Uh, I've seen him in local magazines that have nothing to do with the law uh, and offering, you know, we'll look at your, uh, make sure that you've got in good insurance, you know, everything you need to do. So there's, there's just so many of these little hidden things that don't cost very much except the time to go investigate them. There's free rags that, you know, when you walk out of the restaurants, if that's where your demographic is, is that is that where your perfect client is? You want to be there. That's right. Now, radio still exists. I had to remind Tom of this yesterday when yeah, we were I reviewing. Yeah, I remember the last time I heard radio. <laughs> uh, and radio, is, when I, we're talking about it for our purposes here, can also include uh, Pandora, Spotify, Sirius Satellite, you know, whatever, anything that, that you would listen to rather than watch uh, in general terms. And in a lot of ways, it's the same uh, general principle as TV. This is where you have a big opportunity to drive branded search. Now, you typically with the radio don't have people's undivided attention, uh, and you've got a very limited time span in which you need to be both memorable and making yourself easy to find. Uh, so, you know, a relatively simple message that is on brand with your larger overall marketing and branding approach and philosophy, uh, you know, it is there to be a sort of reinforcement of the general projection that you're putting out there in terms of uh, who your brand is and what it does. And just real quick on this, I know that um, when I was speaking to Michelle Davis about this, because we were talking about her TV campaigns and her for radio campaigns for Chris Davis, Davis Law Group out in Seattle, Washington. Um, they do a lot of uh, both, and she speaks very highly of their radio campaigns. Interesting, they're always offering their their uh, their books, mm -hmm. and um, the I believe it's like the traffic guy gets on there and talks about it, and he's actually a past client of theirs, which helps. So uh, I know that their radio ads worked very well. I don't know if they still are, but. Well, and it's not necessarily a new idea, but don't be afraid to think outside of the box a little bit. You know, I, we could be talking beyond just buying an ad spot that plays during a commercial break on, on the local classic rock station or whatever. Uh, radio stations all over the country would, would be happy to, uh, it, you know, establish some sort of partnership where, you know, you come to the station Sunday evenings and yeah. have a... Call in and ask a lawyer. Open mic night with a lawyer. The DC 101 here locally uh, does, I forget the, the guy's name. He's kind of obnoxious, but he's like the street lawyer to answer all your sort of That's what he remembers. Shady shady remember the name. Well, there you go. That's not a great rap. Uh, you know, Jeffrey Melvin does this uh, down there in Florida. He does mm -hmm. radio. He's been doing that for years in his scholarship program, which I know that you'll get into here. But, yeah, I mean, like, there's a lot of opportunity on radio for you to uh, spouse your wisdom to the world and the important thing to remember is not only are you getting your name out there but that there are tangible mechanical benefits from a rankings perspective uh, from doing so now we can't mention traditional offline marketing without also mentioning uh, billboards park benches the 
bus wraps, everything you see for sort of, you know, what could, uh, you know, very easily be sort of hand waved as old school and effective marketing by a lot of people who are focused on sort of the digital side only. But that's not the case. You talk to any large firm and they'll tell you exactly how effective their traditional marketing efforts are. And, you know, often without a doubt, they are still a tremendously large, uh, you know, facet of their overall marketing uh, campaign and strategy. It drives branded search in a way that also affords you an opportunity to be creative and memorable. I mean, how many silly billboards have you seen? You know, the same way a jingle gets stuck in your head 15 years totally. later, you can still remember, uh, you know, particular billboards that you saw in the Reagan administration, probably. And you, some we still see on the, on the same ones. And that's another good point. This is not like a one-time event. These are the kind of things that you want to have go ongoing, ongoing, ongoing to keep that brand consistency and that message consistent mm -hmm. for a long period of time. This is not just do it one time and let's see what happens. This has got to keep keep going on and on and on. The consistency is going to be a major component in terms of how memorable the right. campaign ultimately is. And that's what you want if the end goal is to drive branded search. You want people in the moment when they're not looking at the billboard, but two years later when they're in a different, you know, completely different part of town, they you want that billboard to be the first thing that pops into their mind or you know whether it was a billboard or whatever it is and i was asking about this and we were going over this and and you said that two keller jim keller that has billboards down in new mexico new mexico and indiana yeah and he's got his brand which is uh jim carney right and mm -hmm. it's like the tough and that is consistent he's maintained that consistent brand image for as long as he's been a client of ours and before then mm -hmm. and and that that brand image is also in his tv commercials right on the website on the website and that brand consistent that's another point is that keeping that brand consistency we know that Hugh P and Abraham Hugh has uh, Captain Kirk uh, or Denny Craig depending upon your perspective you know my dad <laughs> um, out on, on doing commercials there and so we want to make sure that there's not brand confusion people don't think that they're hiring Denny Crane when they go there so we have those commercials on the website as well and so if you've got billboards if you've got this stuff don't forget to put to attach those things to the website so people see, oh, this is what I was looking at. I'm in the right place. And you you run a risk of spinning your wheels uh, a bit. If you do all of this work to increase the amount of branded search that's coming into your site, but serve people what's ultimately a poor user experience, you know, Google might give you a few points in the plus column for increasing your branded search, but they're also taking off a few points for for serving their customers, the searchers, uh, poor user experience that's, overall. That's a great point. That's all about conversion and user experience, which is a different thing than we're talking about right now, right? We're talking about driving traffic. That's mm -hmm. what this is. So here's probably my favorite opportunity that you have to leverage offline marketing. And that's, I, you know, I'm lumping a lot of sort of separate things here together, but speaking gigs, essentially, workshops, seminars, yeah. show off a little bit your knowledge base. Don't be afraid to put yourself out there as an authority on a particular subject matter, whether that's direct client interaction or whether that's speaking to other professionals within your niche. You know, it could go either way, but there are opportunities there to establish yourself as an authority, to get your brand and your name, whether that's your, your business's name or, or your actual personal name, uh, in people's minds, and to just demonstrate your competency in this area. Make people want to work with you. You've got an opportunity to speak to a room full of people and, and sell them on yourself. And in you know, a slightly more subtle way, you have lots of opportunities in any of these speaking engagements to point people uh, in a direction that's gonna result in some branded searches, some brand mentions, whatever the case may be. Make sure you go to my website to sign up for my newsletter or to get a free copy of my book that goes into this topic that we're discussing in much greater detail or whatever the case may be. You can uh, be the bumpers on the bowling lane when trying to guide exactly how these people are getting to you. And that's the opportunity you have here. Yeah, this is my favorite too. Obviously, this is what put us on the map. This is what put Ben Glass on the map, you know, doing these gigs, uh, the seminars. That, you know, when we first started doing those seminars back in the day, uh, there was, you know, 10, 15, 20 people in the room. And now, you know, you just look at 200, 300 people in the room. And that's how you grow. And and I know tons of other lawyers. Brenda Geiger comes to mind. Dave Fries comes to mind. 
uh, that do these these seminars, uh, estate planning, and they get not only other lawyers in there, but tons of people that come in there, and that generates the buzz, as you say. Mm -hmm. And I mean, this is a very inexpensive way to get started doing this. You don't need to go rent out, you know, the Plaza Hotel. You can do it in your own office or, you know, in a community center. Uh, there's creative ways to do it, but just get started doing it. And then, of course, yes, always make an offer. Another thing that uh, a little trick that uh, Rem Jackson does is when he goes and speaks, Rem Jackson, who is the uh, marketing uh, czar to podiatrists and many of us and a good friend of mine in the company. Uh, but Rem Jackson will go and speak at podiatry conferences or tons of conferences, and he'll basically just leave a form out uh, for people to get more information uh, from him and they'll go online and that's where he drives traffic there. He's not selling right there on the floor, but he's mm -hmm. selling his brand. Speaking gigs like this are also a low-key, really great way to build authoritative, relevant links over time. If you're working with an organization, yeah. see if they can add you to their page of featured speakers or whatever. You know, there's uh, don't be afraid to be creative a little bit, but there are often opportunities in this realm for link building that don't necessarily exist via some of these other channels. Community involvement. Tom, I know we talk a lot about this. What are the biggest benefits from a marketing perspective uh, about getting out there and being visible in your community? Well, this is another one of my favorite things to recommend to people because uh, people buy from people they like and people like to refer people. There's a lot of, uh, uh, just by being out there and contributing to the community, people will be appreciative of it. You know, we talked about, um, you know, sports teams. Most most people our age, my age, well, you're still a young buck, Jamie, but you know, they, they've got kids and they're participating they're out there on the soccer field or the baseball field. Why not uh, put up a tent with your logo on it? You know, Jim Dotson, my God, Jim Dotson is probably one of the best. And of course, you know, Ben, uh, he's a ref out there and he's got his, you know, he puts out his signs out there and, and he's got his tents. And when he was running marathons, he would put out his tents out there, Ben Glass Law. Uh, but Jim Dotson and his biking, Right. Mm -hmm. He's out there, you know, putting up tents and, and contributing, giving away bike helmets and bikes and whatnot. Uh, that means a lot to people. You know, when you give something, give your time, give your energy, give your effort, people will remember that and appreciate that. That's right. It's, it's a great way to demonstrate your humanity beyond sort of the work. And you're already there. You're already there. You're already there anyway. And if you're able to, if you're able to connect your passion to that like Jim mm -hmm. Jim Dodson who's a big bike rider down there and he's able to connect his passion to that and he's gotten you know a few really good cases as a result of that relationship in the community it's it's very important opportunity to make a good impression and to leave yeah. people with a positive impression with you personally and with your brand as a whole by extension and and I mean like Hupe Hupe and Abraham I mean like that that's got to be the 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 crown of community involvement. I mean, Michael Hupe is one of the, gives so much back to the community up in Milwaukee, and they're constantly doing things out there, helping the community out, and that comes back to them. Mm -hmm. I know that's not why he does it, because he's just that kind of guy, uh, but it comes back to them. Absolutely. In a big way. Now, bonus here, promo items. Uh, if you've got swag with your logo on it, then Perfect. This is a great opportunity to, uh, you know, this isn't a new concept, right? right. But, uh, you know, get it out there, get it in people's minds, uh, and it's there buried somewhere in their brain when, when the need arises. The, the benefit here that we're talking about is that can positively affect your organic rankings. Those branded searches and brand mentions matter. And, and they can matter quite a bit if you're able to generate uh, a substantial amount of them. Yeah, and every time they use whatever it is, the mm -hmm. koozie or the the glass or whatever. Like right now, we're drinking from Foster Web Marketing pint glasses, right? That's and, right. And I've many of you have texted me like having your you know evening beer out of a pint glass means that you're thinking about our brand every time that you do that. So mm -hmm. 
link building opportunities here, great opportunities uh, with mm -hmm. uh, community, local, uh, charitable organizations, whatever the case may be. Uh, always, you know, do not forget about the opportunities that exist to generate uh, high quality links. Now, next up is direct mail, which is sort of a touchy subject in the advertising world. A lot of people say it's a tremendous waste of money. Was an equal number of people say it's a tremendous driver of these referrals uh, from you know people they worked with a decade ago who you know are find themselves suddenly in an opportunity to refer somebody to someone. And if you're the name that's top of mind for them, that can be uh, extremely helpful. This could be anything from newsletters. Okay, I was wondering, can we throw newsletters in here? Because yes. that's a big one. You know, like Ben says it, you know, I can throw everything away, but I'll never throw away my print newsletter. Mm -hmm. And it's funny because I feel the same way. The print newsletter is something that, and we're a digital shop, uh, you, you know, the print newsletter is what I get really good feedback on. That's something that they're not going to throw away. The better that you do it. Now, if you just Xerox pieces of paper together and staple them and send them out, people are not going to keep that. But I hold on to you know, all the newsletters that come in. I'm like, wow, this is really good. This is good stuff. Um, the better that you can make that, the better response that you're going to get. But it's a, it's your ability to uh, uh, to promote the other things that you do. So they, if you're if you're a firm that does multiple things that are diverse, like if you do personal injury and family law and you know estate planning, and there there are those of you out there that do that, you know if uh, if somebody has a personal injury and they come in and talk to you about that, there's no reason why you shouldn't talk to them about your estate planning. And maybe it's not right then at the time, but you want to stay top of mind mm -hmm. because when they want to do a will, they're going to go out where. They're going to go out to the cesspool of the web to do a search. Why make them do that? They don't want to do that anyway. They want to work with somebody that they want to work with. So do not ignore. That's the gold at your feet. Even if you're just getting started, even if you're just, you know, you've only been a lawyer for five years, you've got some clients that you should market to, and that promotes referral and brand again. And, of course, we the newsletter is a big thing, but then – direct mail in the form of like what Van Hardenberg does, you know, of course, you know, uh, anytime the traffic ticket, mm -hmm. uh, DUI, this guy is like the, the, the master of uh, spitting out tons and tons of, of letters that go out to everybody. And, you know, he improves it even better by sending out his book with that, which, which sets him apart from other people that are just sending out a letter. And remember, it's not just send a letter. It's what's in the letter, too. What are you doing there? Are you driving them back to your website to get something or to get more information? You need to be smart about that. Well, and that's sort of one of the main points mentioned on the slide, too, is that, you know, this is to drive home your, your core messaging. And if your core messaging is inconsistent or sloppy or, or yeah. not a good message, it doesn't matter how much you share it It's if it doesn't resonate. And, and just as another note, if you are doing this already and not getting good conversion from it, then talk to us because we can look at it and say, well, you should probably do this, this, and this, and this, and that will improve your conversion. That's what we're here for. But so that's it in a nutshell in terms of specific offline well, channels. Well, on time. <laughs> well, I've got one or two more slides okay. here, but I, I want to recap everything because we started at a very high level. Uh, you know, sort of defining goals. We talked some mid-level strategies and then also some specific tactics. And I want to uh, just recap all of that. But if the goal is to improve organic rankings via offline marketing, uh, there are a, a couple very sort of objective, demonstrable ways that you can go about uh, affecting that. Your overall strategy should be to increase your social proof in the form of higher volume of branded search queries coming in per month, per quarter, whatever the case may be. Improving the number and increasing the number of brand mentions, these implied links uh, that Google referenced way back in their Panda algorithm many years ago, uh, but also traditional hyperlink link building, uh, also an important part of this, uh, uh, this trifecta here. Uh, I've on this last slide covered all of the specific offline channels uh, that we covered just in the past 20 or 30 minutes or so and broken them down by sort of which aspect of offline uh, they can be used to leverage. Uh, this will be a good sort of uh, crib notes that you can use going forward in terms of exactly how and where you want to be improving any of these specific, uh, these specific uh, verticals. That's it. Tom, what do people need to know about strategic consulting? Okay, so if you're like, what the hell are you guys talking about? Or how do I start?
start or what should I do first? Um, one of the things is uh, just just let's set up a call with me. Uh, you can either email me or Connie at Fosterwood Marketing and we'll schedule a time. It doesn't cost you anything to have a conversation and uh, we'll see what we can do to help you out. Do we, and oh, another thing too though, is I wanna say before we hit these questions, mm -hmm. yeah, you, 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 you wanna hit that real quick, this, this social media mentions? Well, we've got, we've got two questions okay. here. So did you have, did... well, I was just gonna say that, you know, really, if you, want to, if you want to get super educated on how to do this, you should really get involved in Great Legal Marketing um, and come to the Great Legal Marketing Summit here coming up in October. Uh, we have them every year. We'll have a bunch of great speakers out there. Uh, there's also the Great Legal Marketing Boot Camp that happens, I think, every quarter uh, that Charlie Mann's putting on. It's pretty exciting because they are in... I don't even know where they are. They may be 70%, 80% done with the facility down the street here that they're going to be doing these boot camps in, but they go into hyper detail on this stuff. And so the best thing to do um, is, uh, if you're able and willing, is to come and bring your marketing assistant or just send your marketing assistant to uh, the boot camp, great, great Legal Marketing Boot Camp. I don't know all the URLs. You can do searches for that, brand mm -hmm. search. There you go. And uh, get more information about that. But I encourage everybody that wants to get better at this. Um, this is way less expensive and frustrating than bidding on uh, vanity keywords and being talked into doing that. Um, and it's a way to get the gold at your feet going so that is feeding you as you're establishing the other stuff. That's right. So what are these questions? Yeah, we've we got? got two questions from Denise. Denise, we'll cover both of these. And if anybody else has any questions, uh, pop them into the chat and we'll, uh, we'll line them up and knock them out here momentarily. Uh, Denise's first question is, does an implied link have to be the name of the business or could it be the words in the URL? Um, and that's an excellent question because mm -hmm. not everybody's URL is exactly the same as their brand name. Um, in a perfect world, maybe they all would be the same, but just, you know, factually, that's not going to be the case. Um, it, it's also a question that I don't have a perfect answer for. Um, you know, the words in the URL, it would depend a little bit on exactly what the URL is and, and what it is compared to the brand name. Um, in general terms, I would say the implied link does not have to be specifically the name of the business. If they're referring to you by the URL but not linking to you, that would uh, definitely still count as, as sort of a brand mention or, or the implied link if you want to use that term. So best case scenario is the brand is the URL, but mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be that way. Sure. Obviously, Hupi is Hupi.com. It's not Hupi and Abraham mm -hmm. um, and to Keller is to Keller, it's not, you know. Keller and Keller, yeah. yeah. So it, it doesn't have to be that way. And that's, you know, part of the Google getting smarter and smarter and smarter and smarter and figuring that out. That's right. Now, Denise's second question uh, overlaps with this a little bit too. Uh, she asked, do social media mentions count towards Google algorithms? And yes, absolutely. That's uh, one very important place where a lot of these brand mentions are going to be happening more often than not. Now, Google, you know, doesn't particularly care if you if you reference a business on Facebook, you know, you if you're you know calling somebody out for good or bad uh, on Facebook, uh, you have the ability to tag that business, uh, sure. But even if you don't tag them within Facebook's platform, Google's still reading all of this and is able to to see and appropriately categorize that brand mention that you're giving in one way or another. Um, so, you know, short answer, yes, social media mentions uh, not only count towards Google's algorithm when it comes to brand mentions and implied likes, but it's probably the largest uh, source of those sorts of, uh, those sorts of mentions. Very good. Well, Jamie, thank you very much for putting this together. I hope that everybody enjoyed this webinar. We will, uh, it was recorded. I see it's being recorded here, so we'll post it online here shortly. That's right. And, uh, if you guys have any questions or uh, what do I do or just anything, then I'm happy to talk. Send me an email, Tom at FosterWebMarketing.com or Connie at FosterWebMarketing.com or Jamie at FosterWebMarketing.com. That's right. Jamie heads up our services division and his responsibility is making sure that our clients are kicking butt online. And uh, so this is, this is 
this is a lot of the stuff that he's working with our clients on to success. So this is not just stuff that we make up. All right. Very good. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Jamie. Thank you, guys. See you next month.